there is no such thing as totally objective filmmaking. It's always subjective. All filmmaking is manipulative in not necessarily a bad way, in the way that a good performance by an actor is manipulative. But, but truth is important, I think. And in, in that can take a lot of different forms. So like a, a good documentary, there's this idea that documentaries are telling the truth. And it's just a question of, well, is the manipulation of filmmaking by adding music and cutting dialogue and doing different things like that, is it changing the truth or is it presenting the truth more clearly? And it's this huge grayscale and every film is different. You know, so it's, it's uh, I don't know quite how to answer that, but I don't believe this idea that anything is objective any more than the nightly news or CNN is objective. It just isn't. It's all framed and it's all hired and it's all sponsored and it all has motivations. Truth is the new postmodern. Hmm. I mean, I think that there, I think when, um, I mean, like this shot is a frame I and mean, you're not shooting the stuff over there. And so anytime you make a, make a film, you're, you're selecting and you're choosing. But I think you can choose with, actually one of the things that Doug and I talked about is our relationship to the subjects, which is that I th I, my feeling, and I think it resonated with you, but I won't speak for you, is that I have responsibility to tell the truth, but I also know that if you shoot almost any meaningful amount of footage, you can make somebody say almost anything through editing in a film. So you have another higher responsibility. You have two high, high responsibilities. One is to the truth, as you perceive it. But the other responsibility, I feel like, it's not so much that the subject should like the film, because that's such a you know, that's such a weird standard. I mean, what does that even mean? Um, but I do think you have to be willing to sit in the room with the subject and be able to. I, my, my I have to be willing to feel comfortable explaining to them the choices. You know, you know, I think there's this conception of documentaries as one as really one kind of of film where it's yeah it is about finding the truth or exposing some wrong or writing some you know injustice or something and um, and, and I'm constantly just amazed by how many different types of documentaries there are. I mean, a documentary does not have to tell a story. You don't have to learn anything from it. We are, we are not trying to teach you anything making a documentary. I mean, for, for me, the documentary, is, it's an exploration, or it's also kind of the artifact of an exploration. Like, I'm interested in these subjects, and the way I get to explore them and learn about them is by making a, a documentary about them. And that, and that process, even though I'm not in the film specifically, like, I'm not, I'm not on camera, I don't talk in the movies, but, but you are kind of, as a viewer, you are watching my exploration of, of the subject. And, um, and that's all it is, it's an exploration. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think that you should get answers from documentaries. I think they should raise more questions. It should be getting the viewer to uh, look at what their relationship is to the subject matter and come up with their own conclusions about, about what is the truth and what isn't the truth and what is applicable and, and what's not. So I, I, I see it as, as, as much more that. We're kind of creating a structure for people to, to um, watch these things and come up with their own, their own definitions and their own answers and their own direction from it. But I just want to say that there are, like, you know, with my 901 documentary, there was a point to it that you were, you, the, there was the answer to the question of what was it like to close the office. And then there are other ones that are ambiguous. And what I find fascinating, to your point about how many different documentaries, movies have only been around 120 years, and already people, you know, want them in these little slots that are, you know, whereas you think about writing's been around thousands of years, and it's evolved into all, we, we recognize all these genres, there's, there's things that are poetry, there's technical language, there's, you know, there's novels, there's short stories, I mean, we, it, there's theater, I mean, there's all these different things that are still the written word. And I think film has a long way to go to develop what all those amazing threads are going to be. And in the case of, you know, Charles and Ray's films, those films aren't really documentaries at all. They're more like essays. You know, and that's another whole, you know, I mean, and you wouldn't call them educational films. And yet there are other, there are films that are educational that are just spellbinding. I mean, it even goes back to your, docu your, your documentary. Do we hate advertising? Yeah, of course. Although I remember that really great ad that I saw. It wasn't. I got to see the 1984 ad. You know, I mean, it's like all of a sudden when you unpack it, it's n it's never that simple. So I, that's what I think is fascinating about all everybody wanting to label 
film. It's like, why is the standard format of film 90 minutes, 100 minutes? It's weird. I mean, I wonder if that, who knows if that form will exist in 100 years. Communication. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, exactly. it's like when we edit documentaries, we're writing. That's all it is. And in a hundred years, I guarantee there will be English classes and there will be communicating with whatever it is. It won't be called film probably, but just visual and sound communication. And there will be English teachers and there will be, it'll be absolutely seen the same way. Oh, how are you going to communicate these ideas? Are you going to you choose writing or are you going to choose filmmaking or whatever the third thing will be at that point? That's all it is. You know, if I have strong political views and I make a documentary about my cat, that documentary is going to have my views in it somehow. It's going to have that thing. Like, you can't, it's still me communicating, you know. Like, you guys filming us right now, there's something in your framing or the way she's shooting and you're asking questions. It's you. This is your view of us. And that's what it should be. Um, Bruce Nussbaum said he used the words uh, innovation, creativity, and design sort of interchangeably. So I don't normally use them interchangeably, but I think I take this I, this conference in that spirit that um, that we do need to rethink a lot of things in the, on this planet, and I think that that's you know I, I think that that's what people see. And personally, I welcome. I think design went kind of went a little bit off off path in the past few years that there's a confu been a confusion between design and style and I think that design at its heart is a uh, problem solving enterprise and the world has a lot of problems and if it and, and I, I actually think it's important for design and I think that this conference actually has a lot of people who think this way that designers no longer define solutions in terms of objects you know I mean does the world you know there are obvious objects to design, like a solar panel that you can install yourself that can power your, your home. But maybe there are systems that need to be, you know, designed. And, it, and I think that the real power of all this is design thinking, a, a willingness to go on a design journey. And I think, actually, design is a life skill, not a professional skill. And the more we can harness it um, in the same way, or the more we can go down that, um, that path, we, it actually will make designers valued more because when you, when you know how to do something, you don't like dismiss the profession. You're like, wow, that person only knows what they're doing, but I can recognize it in my own life now. And, and, and that, that um, speaks to the fact that everything is, is design. I mean, political systems are a design. Healthcare systems are a design. Wars are a design. It's all about um, the same kind of type of thinking and problem solving and uh, strategy and long-term goals and creativity that goes into making a, a you know an iPod or a nice chair or a, you know a country. Um, it's it's all the same type of uh, or, or I think all those things benefit from design thinking and the kind of problem solving methodology and the innovation and the type of skills that designers um, you know have been perfecting for the past you know hundred years uh, can be applied to so many other areas besides just the design of, of stuff. And I think that's what is, is really changing now is that um, conferences like these, so many creative people getting together um, in one place, talking about the issues that are facing South Africa or the African continent or the globe. And when you get that many people in one, uh, in one place who have common goals and who are really creative, that's when kind of solutions can, can come out. And th that's why these design conferences are, are important. Um, it is about surveying the landscape, looking at the challenges, brainstorming solutions, just like a designer would do in, a, in their own office. This is like a collective design office, basically.